What is cancer? We hear this scary word and think of cancer as one of the most devastating diseases in the world. As the second leading cause of death in the United States, scientists have focused time and research to battle different types of cancer, with promising results coming every day. Cancer is a disease that has no cure and has the potential to change and grow uncontrollably throughout the body. But where does cancer start? Every human cell has a set of individualized instructions stored in long pieces of genetic information called DNA. DNA is made of millions of individual molecules called nucleotides. Each person's set of DNA, which is called a genome and is stored inside of the, the control center called the nucleus of a cell, is processed into shorter pieces of genetic information called RNA through a mechanism called transcription. RNA is then processed through a mechanism called translation into long chains called polypeptide chains, which are made of molecular building blocks called amino acids, which are later folded into proteins. These chains can be made of millions of combinations of 20 amino acids. The polypeptide chains are folded with chemical bonds into different types of proteins, which help cells perform different functions. Every cell contains information for every gene, but not every gene is expressed in every cell. Different cells throughout the body can turn on and off different genes through a number of me mechanisms that I will explain later. Different combinations of protein expression in each cell give cells in different locations of the body a different function. DNA contains both coding regions, which contain information for creating proteins, and non-coding regions, which regulate the process of turning DNA into RNA and into proteins. Surrounding the coding regions are regulatory sequences of DNA called the enhancer, promoter, and terminator sequences. These regulatory sequences manage how often the coding sequences become activated and how much of the resultant protein is expressed. Because of these regulatory regions, DNA and protein expression can be turned up to create more proteins or turned down to create less. As cells replicate, they need to pass on their genetic information and DNA to the next generation of cells. But with millions of individual nucleotides to replicate, the process of copying the nucleotides can be faulty and mutations, or incorrect placements of nucleotides, are common. Sometimes mutations are small and insignificant, causing no damage to the resultant protein at all. But other times, mutations can change the shape and structure and function of the resultant protein. Usually, when errors in replication occur, the DNA checking system of the cell can catch the mistake early enough and fix the incorrect nucleotides. Or, if the mutation passes by the DNA checking system and the dangerous protein is expressed, the cell can kill itself in a process called apoptosis. Okay, now on to cancerous cells. Within the human genome, there are many genes called proto-oncogenes that help regulate cell growth and differentiation and can help cells grow more or less. Cancer-causing and cancer-promoting genes, called oncogenes, begin as normal proto-oncogenes and acquire mutations to become oncogenes. In normal humans, Genes called tumor suppressor genes prevent the oncogenes from being transcribed and translated into proteins or promote cell death through apoptosis. But when tumor suppressor genes are mutated, allowing oncogenes to express dangerous proteins, cancerous cells can begin to grow, replicate, and spread, using up the body's energy and resources. As cancer cells grow uncontrollably, they need more blood to replicate and survive. In order to develop new blood vessels to assist in cell growth, Developing cells use an intracellular pathway called angiogenesis to establish new blood vessels and help these new cells grow, migrate, and survive. In mature cells, angiogenesis genes are usually turned on low, and few proteins are expressed, giving normal function. When a mutation occurs in the regulatory or non-coding region of these genes, the coding regions of angiogenesis proteins can become constantly activated and express too many proteins. More blood and nutrients will then be sent to the cells, helping them grow. High rates of angiogenesis do not cause cancer, but rather aid cancerous cell growth. One particular pathway that promotes angiogenesis is called the vascular endothelial growth factor pathway, or VEGF for short. In the VEGF pathway, there are two main proteins involved, cell surface receptors and small floating proteins called ligands. The cell surface receptors, called tyrosine kinase receptors, promote intracellular pathways, called signaling cascades, 
that lead to angiogenesis. The small floating proteins, called ligands, land and attach themselves on the receptors, activating the receptors and starting the signaling cascades. This happens most often in developing cells to help them grow using blood vessels. VEGF genes are proto-oncogenes that encode for multiple versions of the receptors and the ligands. For this video, I've depicted these genes as being right next to each other, but in reality, a number of other genes separate them. When the regulatory regions of the VEGF genes become mutated in the DNA of mature cells, the coding regions of the genes become constantly activated, becoming oncogenes. Too many proteins are created and too much angiogenesis occurs, allowing the cells to grow and replicate uncontrolled. One type of VEGF gene, called VEGF-A, encodes for an important pathway and allowing angiogenesis to occur. The small ligand encoded by VEGF-A is able to bind to two different receptors, which are called tyrosine kinase receptors on the cell surface. More specifically, the ligand is attracted to a co-receptor of the receptors called neuropillin-1, or NRP1 for short, which I will talk about more in a minute. When too much VEGF ligand is created and too much angiogenesis occurs, anti-cancer drugs can target the VEGF-A pathway either intracellularly or extracellularly. Intracellular blockage of the pathway is performed by proteins called tyrosine kinase inhibitors that block the receptors from launching the signaling cascade. Extracellular inhibition of the VEGF pathway targets either the VEGF-A ligand or the cell surface receptors, some anti-cancer drugs send small proteins called antibodies to areas of the body with cancerous cells. Other drugs send soluble receptors to the cancerous cells. The antibodies attach to the ligand, changing the ligand's shape, preventing it from attaching to the receptor. Other anti-cancer drugs send imitation soluble receptors to trick the ligands into binding to them rather than to the real receptors. This stops the signaling cascade from starting too much angiogenesis. One new proposed method of VEGFA pathway inhibition is to target the neuropillin-1 co-receptor, which doesn't launch the signaling cascade itself, but instead helps ligands bind to the receptors. There is currently one drug called EG3287 that blocks NRP1 activity, and it has been shown to prevent angiogenesis and promote apoptosis in cancerous cells. Scientists have also tested soluble NRP1, which attracts the VEGF ligand away from the receptor and prevents angiogenesis. Targeting the NRP1 co-receptor, the ligands don't start the signaling cascade that causes angiogenesis, while unintended consequences are kept to a minimum. However, as effective as these methods promise to be, these drugs are not yet available for humans as cancer treatment. So, to recap, genetic information called genes are stored inside of DNA in every cell. DNA is transcribed into RNA, and RNA is translated into proteins. Genes can mutate, and some mutations change the resultant protein into a harmful protein, or too much or too little protein. When the mutation occurs in a gene that regulates cell growth, the mutated gene is called an oncogene. The proteins that oncogenes encode for help cells grow uncontrollably and become cancer. Growing cells need extra blood and use a pathway called angiogenesis. VEGFA is one gene that encodes for a ligand that attaches to a receptor, creating an intracellular pathway that promotes angiogenesis. When the regulatory regions of the VEGFA gene are mutated, the gene is constantly activated, becoming an oncogene and creating too many proteins that help cancerous cells grow. There are different ways of interfering with the VEGFA pathway in order to stop angiogenesis and the growth of unwanted cells. But the most effective method that causes the fewest side effects seems to be targeting the neuropillin-1 co-receptor. Targeting the NRP1 co-receptor is the next step forward in treatment of all types of cancer. Since angiogenesis helps all types of cancer grow, this method of slowing the progression of cancer can be used as an effective treatment for millions of people. If we can stop cancer from spreading uncontrollably throughout the body, we can stop it from being the most devastating disease in the world. A big thank you to Khan Academy and Breakthrough Junior Challenge for giving me this opportunity, and thank you to everyone who supported me through the creation of this video.